Aloha! This is Pipeline Audio with a tutorial on getting started in Reaper. Recomp Basics I'd like to introduce you to Recomp, Reaper's very own compressor. This has been a lot of work, testing and refinement to create an all-around very versatile dynamics processor. A lot of thought about why compressors do what they do and how they behave went into this, and it's an ongoing process which will only get better as the Reaper versions fly by. Justin has really outdone himself on this one. Recomp can do technical compression and limiting with ease, putting you in complete control, but surprisingly, it's also capable of character compression, imparting a sonic footprint from some familiar classics. I was able to convincingly, to me at least, emulate some of the who's who in dynamics units. But with all this power comes a lot of complexity, so at first Recomp may not behave as predicted. Let's look at some of the controls and try to see how they relate to getting the sound you're looking for. As with all things Reaper, Recomp is subject to change at any time and probably will, so if a few things seem out of date, don't stress. Hopefully you've already watched the Regate Basics video. A lot of these subjects are covered in that tutorial, so if you haven't seen it, grab it now. It'll make things a lot easier to grok. First of all, on the far left is the threshold control. Unlike Regate, Recomp ignores any signal under the threshold. If you have the threshold set at minus 12 and your highest peak is at minus 18, you get garbage in and garbage out. If the signal passes over the threshold, the magic begins. As with Regate, the level the threshold sees is determined and modified by the detector circuit. In the top middle, we have the envelope controls. Precomp offsets the attack start position by a negative amount. For instance, with the pre-comp of 5 milliseconds, the attack curve will start at 5 milliseconds before an over-threshold signal triggers the compressor. More time travel stuff like Regate's pre-open. Attack is the amount of time it takes after a signal has gone over the threshold to the point in time that the compressor reaches the full amount of gain reduction you specify in the ratio control. Release is the amount of time that elapses after the signal has gone back below the threshold until the signal is back up at unity gain. For instance, a one second release means it will take one full second after the signal falls below the threshold level before the compressor completely stops applying gain reduction. Bear in mind the attack and release times are not switches, they are curves. Very much like turning down the volume control on a guitar for attack and turning it up for release. The next control is the ratio. This sets the amount of gain reduction applied by the compressor for a given level over the threshold. The number on the left that you control defines the amount of level over the threshold that the signal has to reach for the output to have 1 dB of gain. For instance, take a threshold set at minus 12 dB, feed it a steady minus 3 dB signal. If the ratio is set at 3 to 1, minus 9 dB will be seen at the output. If the ratio is 9 to 1, minus 11 dB will be seen at the output. Now we get to the knee size. This is sometimes called the soft knee control. On the left you see a hard knee setup, a knee size 0. On the right you see a 6 decibel knee size. As you can tell from the pictures, with a softer knee, the ratio isn't an all or nothing deal. It gradually transitions from unity gain to full compression. Now let's take a look at the detector section. As in Regate, these controls choose and modify the level that the threshold control will be working with. First is the detector input source. Here you choose which signal the threshold will see. Leave it on main input for a regular setup where the threshold sees the incoming audio from that track. Choose one of the auxiliaries if you'd like another track to control the compressor, like our popular example of a kick drum as detector input on a bass guitar track. Besides the main and aux inputs, there's a new one to take special notice of, output or feedback. Choosing this setting puts the compressor's detector into feedback mode where the detector reads the compressor's output signal. Next control down is the low-pass filter. This causes the detector to ignore any audio frequencies above the value set by the low-pass. And of course below it is the high-pass filter, which causes the detector to ignore any settings below the high-pass. Below this is a critical new parameter, the RMS size. This control sets the amount of time the detector samples to come up with an average level value to send to the threshold. Setting this to zero is the same as reading peaks while setting a non-zero value enters RMS territory. The checkbox on the right, marked Preview Filter, allows you to listen to the detector signal. The last set of controls are the Output Mix section. Wet Mix sets the level of the compressor's output, while Dry Mix sets the level of unprocessed signal fed to the output of Recomp. Now we have the controls defined, at least technically, but this tells you very little about how to make this compressor do what you want it to do. The next video, Using Recomp, will deal with practical applications.